Hello everybody and welcome to this Train Sim TV video. Today we're taking a look at the Five Circle Edinburgh to Dunfermline view which has just been released by Dovetail Games on Steam for Train Simulator 2020. And we're going to take a trip from Edinburgh in one of the included scenarios up to Glenrose with Thornton via uh, Burnt Island and the coastal route. We're currently sat at Edinburgh Waverley. I have swapped in the Class 68 Enhancement Pack Loco and the Armstrong Powerhouse Mark II into this scenario. So this scenario will run exactly the same as the one that comes with the view but is slightly different because I have obviously um, swapped some stock in. So we're going to unpause the game now at Edinburgh. I have had a little fly across the route to gather some thoughts up and, and see what I think. Um, so there is some bits I've already seen which I know to show in the video. But this is Edinburgh Waverley, we're in platform is it 20 down the back here. Yeah, platform 20 and we're going to unpause the game now. And first thing so is we're going to open the doors. Next up I need to set up the... I don't need to press control on E. I, I didn't need to do that. That's completely the wrong button. Uh, shift in here I was going to press to put the electric train supply on. So I've done that right. And next up, time to prepare the cab. So now our electric train um, ETS is active. AWS is going mad. Right, there we go. Sword. So we're just loading passengers here at Edinburgh Waverley before we set off out towards um, the north. Check the headlights. Hope they're on. First things first, I'm going to pause on the map so I can show you the route map. So you get Edinburgh Waverley over here on the south end of the route, Haymarket. You've got the line to Glasgow goes off over here. This bit, this, this lot is the tram. Route. So you actually got the tram route from Haymarket through to the depot, I believe it is, near South Gyle and Edinburgh Gateway. I think it's the airport station and stuff over there, is it? I've not actually been on the trams yet. You've got the fourth bridge up here, and then you've got Inverkeith in, and then this is the five circle itself, so this is what's actually called the five circle. Left goes via Dunfermline, right goes the coastal way via Burnt Island, and you come to Thornton Junction on the line to Dundee and Perth. And at Fortin Junction, we turn left towards Glenrose, and that's where our video will end. So this is a scene at Edinburgh Waverley. I'm going to have a little fly around here. Forward apart. Overall, the station's alright. I'm not blown away, I'll be honest, by these 2D buildings and stuff like that. North British Hotel, I think that is. Um, obviously, you don't see them from the cab, but I feel like I could do better than that. Same with some of the Kuju stuff down the side over there. Um, although they aren't really a major issue for me. But if you saw down here, it does look a bit pants for 2020. Really, I feel like we've, we've moved on from cardboard buildings on most routes. It does help FPS, and I understand it obviously get quite stressful around Edinburgh. But uh, I feel like I could have done better than cardboard. The one thing that did irritate me a bit is the fact that the Scott Mon Monument is missing. That's a major landmark in Edinburgh that's missing there and Edinburgh Castle is also missing which is kind of a big deal because that does dominate the view so if you're here you, should, you, would, you do see Edinburgh Castle up there but um, that's a bit of a shame the art gallery is here which uh, is not very high detail but it's there so that's good and the station itself it's alright, it's decent enough I don't know if it's, I guess a lot of it's probably come from Edinburgh to Glasgow uh, although I'm not certain on that, maybe it has been built from scratch, I don't think it has personally, but it looks alright, it's decent enough and some nice assets on here some of them are a bit low res and some of the track works a little bit buggy but otherwise it's not too bad wires at least don't go through the bridge which is a big deal, that's good not sure if we've actually got some new OHL with this route as well and, but overall it looks okay, nothing spectacular but it's decent so we're just waiting for our right away time at the minute here at Edinburgh Waverley. Our scenario stops at Haymarket, South Gyle, Dalmeny, North Queens Ferry, Inverkeithin, Dalgetty Bay, Aberdour, Burnt Island, Kirkcaldy, Glenrose with Thornton. That's where we stop. This is a real service that runs for ScotRail. They use Class 68s on Mark II stock which goes around the five circle and that's probably what's most famous on that route these days to be honest is these local hold services they run in the peak hours morning and evening with these class 68 locomotives 
Um, the wall of having a trip on as well. Um, the evening one I noticed when I went on it, it does get really busy from Edinburgh, so bear that in mind that you'll be fighting for a seat when you leave Edinburgh, but it does quite an off after Inverkeithing. Uh, and it's well worth a trip if you can if you can manage it. So I believe we're getting the road now. So we'll pull away. When the brakes have released. Helps to remove the DRA. Note to self there. See that 2D stuff on the left hand side? Now I can see that from the cab and it looks... Well, it doesn't look fantastic. It's just about sufficient, but I would personally say... That's... You know, it's, it's not really up to 2020 standards, is it? Let's be honest. The other thing I noticed when I was flying around, I've only flown really around the Edinburgh area and just outside a couple of bits. I noticed that the track's all wooden. That I've seen so far, which is a bit strange. I don't know why the track's wooden. I can understand maybe the little bits of Edinburgh Waverley and we'll have a look as we go around, but I would be very surprised if so much as this was wooden. I'm pretty sure it's all concrete on most of the lines. Certainly the coastal side that we're going. Well, this is coming through Princess Street at Gardens. It looks decent enough. So we're going to stay over here on the right hand side, on the Dundee side. If you were on the left hand lines you'd be more likely to be going to Glasgow. I like that footbridge over the top and I like also the disused signal box here in the cutting on the right hand side. Nice little added feature. And so far as a cab experience, you know, it's pretty decent. No complaints. I like the OHLE, that's looking pretty decent in terms of how it's going over the top and under bridges. It's a big deal that it's not cutting straight into the bridges that we've seen so far. Get some power down. Doesn't seem very dark in the tunnel. Would have thought it should be darker than this. Doesn't seem to be a proper occlusion. I'm just like speeding. We're not worried about that. Just, just you know, storming. It's fine. Bad driving. Bad, bad driving. Normally I pretend that didn't happen, but it was for such a long time that I'll probably getting uh, into trouble for speeding like that in real life. I'm going to be getting into trouble for going straight through the station if I don't start slowing down. So this is Haymarket we're coming into now. All sorts of braking fasts are going on. I don't know which platform the stop boards are for there. I guess the ones that we're looking at are these ones here on the left now. Which I've just passed anyway, so... More great driving. So before we uh, leave here, I'll look around the station asset and stuff. I like these platform textures. I'm loving them because they I haven't seen on a route before, really. With the actual studs on the ground. You're normally you get the uh, concrete style, but this has actually got the little studs on the ground, which is nice. Station sign's quite low res, which uh, obviously is a bit of an issue, but not major. And I guess this is after, I think there's been a lot of remodeling going on at Amarket, hasn't there? I think, I'm not sure, I'm not 100% certain. But I feel like this has been a lot modified since uh, Edinburgh Glasgow days anyway. But it's a nice enough model, it looks good. Impressive. Stairs are nice. Yeah, I like that. 
So we're just loading passengers here now at A Market. Liking the uh, cloud effects and stuff. So next stop for us will be um, South Gale, which is just sort of after the junction with the Glasgow line. Mega Kuju sounds going on there, I did know. And they were the included class 170s, they come with this route. I'll go through what stock comes with the route when we get into a quieter area. On the right over there you've got Haymarket Depot and you have also got the tram lines over here which is nice to see. Really nice that they've put those in. So there you've got Haymarket Depot on the right. looks good. Again I'm not sure why we're on wooden track here, it won't, it won't be wooden track on the main lines past Haymarket Depot. I'm virtually certain of that. It's actually jointed as well, so that's obviously completely wrong. Murfield Stadium looks really nice though. That's really good. I am pretty triggered about the uh, wooden track though. That's a pretty basic thing obviously. Because if we're in passenger view we're getting full jointed track sounds now. And in real life you, you don't hear jointed track around here. That's for certain. Quite good here with the uh, tram line actually going over the top that I've noticed, so that's quite cool to see. They've actually got the flyover in. It's a shame there's no basic AI tram I suppose, but I know when we've done the uh, Midland lane, like main line with JT, it's not the sort of thing you can just chuck in, um, but it would have been good to see all the same. As I think this is quite an extended run, it certainly would have been good to see, because you see quite a lot as you're coming along here, certainly in rush hour. It's quite a long section. Start getting some brakes in, ready for South Gale. Actually running a bit early here. Didn't actually notice any bridge echo under that bridge either. So this is um, South Gale Station that we're approaching now. And this is shortly before the climb up to the fourth bridge at South Gale. And where you go across past the airport, which will be on our left uh, shortly after we leave here. Just bringing it in nice and steady, seeing as though we're running early, there's no point in uh, rushing. Nice bridge. I like that bridge asset. A bit of terrain bleeding onto the track there, that's not great in a station especially. Right hand side. Not a major thing, but it's one of those things that you notice.
and the six car stop marker might be a bit far uh, back as well because if you stop there you obviously lead off the back doors off the platform so we've got a while here we can have a little fly around not sure about these new trees I see what they're trying to do with them I love these ones these ones are really nice. But I'm not sure about these really sticky ones. In terms of overall look of the asset though, it's decent. It's, you can see uh, a lot of work's gone into it. I like the ramp and everything coming down off there. Although I don't like the fact that that road's floating a bit. Minor thing though. But I do like the asset itself. It's always nice to see the ramps and everything being added in properly. Stuff like these little features as well, like the help um, points and the signage to go with them. That's nice attention to detail. Shonk. I like that. Free shonk. That's the metro bin things. I'm trying to speed the game up a bit while I stood here because... Uh, conscious that I don't want the video to go on for like 20 years. It is quite a long run. So we're just waiting now. Uh, I'm using what's called async keys which speeds the game up. Uh, you can enable that via launch options. I would just, if you want to do that, just google it. Just literally google enable async keys train simulator and you'll come up with some tutorials on how to do that. So we'll film the departure again from this point. I think it's safe to say at the moment the big thing that's sort of nagging me really is the wooden track. I love the detail, I mean looking from the cab here you've got nice detail to the right, you can see in people's gardens and stuff. Nice variety on the left there, look you've got cars parked and warehouses set out. So that's all good. And this is Edinburgh Gateway Station that we're coming up to, we don't actually stop here though. I'll take a little look around here just after we've gone through. So once that's cleared, we'll just take a little look, fly around. I like how somebody's actually added in the sound of an airplane taking off there. You can hear a plane, which is good, because that's near, it's near the airport. I like the detail down here, with the trams and everything. Look at that. If you've got a tram to use, you could actually make a really good little scenario with them. And that's quite cool, because I believe that's a custom sign. So that's, that's nice attention to detail. You got the uh, glass that goes across towards. Um, you actually, actually put the station in over here. Now I suspect Edinburgh Park Station. Maybe it came from Edinburgh Glasgow. Or was it not even in that route? Maybe it's been made custom for this route, which would be uh, impressive. Interesting. But you could actually do a tram scenario all the way around there. That's quite cool. Uh, but you got the tram depot and stuff over here. I don't think that's a custom, but it's quite good. It's good to see. Maybe it is a custom, actually. Hard to tell, but it's certainly... It's really good to see that they've actually gone to the trouble to do it, because you could have just sort of left this as a hole in the ground, and most people wouldn't see much of it, because it's not viewable from the cab. And this is the station. Uh, Edinburgh Gateway Station. This is a new build station. It was only built in the last couple of years. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that texturing but I think it's meant to be like that. I don't know if this is meant to be see-through but it's, it's a decent enough model. Definitely a decent model. I do like it. Look 
carry on. Pause the game. Don't like that gap there, but I do like the overall look at it of it. That fence sort of pops in a little bit, but overall that's pretty good. I like it. Oh, we got the airport on the left now. Oh, that's nice. I should put some planes in there. Getting progressively more triggered by track drone sounds. It's got on their That's quite cool, that. Yeah, I like it. Nice detail. So we're heading towards um, Dalmany gradually now. Is that plane actually moving? I don't think it is, is it? No, it's stood, so that's a shame. Would have been cool if that was actually moving. Not quite sure why I passed a 75 sign there, but the actual 75 marker didn't come up until after I passed it on the hood. That was unusual. Anyway. I like the colour palette and everything that we're seeing here. That's quite cool. I'm quite happy with that. It looks like good uh, open scenery. Certainly captures the feel. Minorly triggered by stuff like this. He built a fence there where nobody can see it, but why not put it where you can actually see up to the bridge? And not really a fence at all that side. And they keep using these old environment bushes when they've got new ones in the library. Which was something I noticed with the Southampton to Bournemouth route was that there's continued use of assets which they actually own in their own library, better versions of that asset, which I find somewhat unusual. I'm just slowing down now for Dalmany. Can't say as I've seen much super elevation yet. See what we get when we get around the coast. I am liking the variety in the foliage on the sides of the track. It's nicely varied. So there's different sorts of trees and stuff. I'm seeing a lot of the really old weeds getting used though, rather than stuff that I'm seeing stuff that's almost kuju whereas the stuff that replaced kuju is actually in use on the sides like some of these weeds I'm not sure why they're in use when there's far superior ones in their own library again so we get that first glimpse there of the fourth bridge there's like a huge hole in the ground there what's all that about Coming in basically at walking pace, bad driving, well played Mark. I'm probably going to overshoot now. Yep. Epic. GG. Let's have a little look around. That's not amazing, straight away. I think these are, are these new signals? I've got a feeling they might be new signals. That, that chip on, that triggers me every time I hear that. In every route that's ever been in, that's triggered me. So I'll pause the game and have a look. It's nice to put this pathway in. That's really cool. Would have been nicer if they hadn't put a bush across the middle of it, but some trees, but uh, the fact that they've actually added that into, this, into the build, that's really good. Overall, looks decent enough. Yeah, it looks alright. That's weirdly like 2D, which it should be 3D I would have thought, but um, not a major thing. I love that. That's some attention to detail, the path all the way down there. Really good. And I like how you got, well, 
I don't necessarily like how it looks, but I'm assuming that's how it is in real life, how there's a three different textures down there. Interesting whether it is or not, I don't know, but don't I don't like that I don't like that. That's not something I like. When you place a signal and just leave a fence through the middle of it. I mean I did spot straight away as we're going in the cab that there was a, a sign floating the crater in the ground and then you got a signal through the fence as well. It's not that's not great testing, but hey ho. Nice footbridge. So let's have a little while we're sat here, let's have a little fly up to the bridge whilst I get more triggered by the shit noises. I had a feeling it was um, like a, a steel track on here, not wooden, but maybe it is wood, I'm not sure. Looks decent enough and it's nice to have a new version of this. The JT one was probably one of the best models made in train sim. It's nice to have a new model. Seems a little bit on the bright side, but it looks alright. I'm guessing... Is it not baked? Is it baked? I'm not sure. It looks good. Nice detail on it. How all the girders have been, even down here, right down here. Look at the, the view up there, but I can't... I can't say when I've seen it I'm sort of blown away by it. That would be lying to say I was blown away by it. But uh, it looks quite decent. Let's turn stupid fraps on so I can take some screenshots. I'll hide the overlay. Yes, I do use fraps for screenshots. No, I know I shouldn't. Yes, I know I shouldn't, but I do. Anyway, for whatever reason. I don't even know why I do. Force of habit. Camera's moving around really fast. Let's have a ride through the bridge. So you got the old Forth Road Bridge and the new Forth Road Bridge both in the background over there. I think. Yeah, both road bridges are over there. Looks pretty decent. The, the biggest issue is obviously the hills are completely green, but that's a train submission, not the route. Obviously there's a town over that side. As I'm coming into here it looks quite good. Yeah, it looks decent. Again, not like blowing me away, but it looks good. I'd say the main thing is it's just a bit bright. Bad mark, left the brakes on. Why did I get a AWS clear horn on a yellow signal? Interesting. Would have thought I would have got an AWS warning horn there, I don't. I don't know what to expect now with this next signal. A green. Okay, well why was it yellow? Who knows? One of the great train sim mysteries, no doubt. I think we could be getting the screenshot for the uh, video cover here. Probably get bowled out by that 158 that's in the station. I'm sure there's more buildings on this hillside. I got a feeling those hill buildings are up this hillside, but maybe I was wrong. I can't say when I see this view here that I'm thinking it's amazing. I don't know what it is though. Brakes, Mark. Brakes. Brakes. We'll just pretend that green thing isn't there. And that wasn't um, 
a great example of how to stop either. And they're just off though, to be fair. Well, I like that. So this is North Queensfield on the north side of the bridge now. I do like the fact that they've put that in there. It's a little bit low res, but it's nice that it's there. It's not too bad at all. Nice building there as well. A light here for the deep sea world. Didn't even know that were there. Ooh. Not a fan of that. Uh, what's going on? I don't know what's going on there. They've not cut out the... Not cut out the canopy. And it's actually... Oh. Ah. Yeah, so it's actually invisible from one side, which is a shame. Which it is actually, it genuinely is a shame as well, because the actual asset itself is decent, it's really nice. I'm sure they'll patch stuff like that. Footbridge looks good. I found that, that's a really nice footbridge. Really good. And that's the classic view. That, that's where I should have taken the screenshot. I was too busy faffing about up there and then overshooting the station. That's where I should have taken it. I like the brick texture there as well. The This issue... Now, if you go into Root Editor, I'm not going to do it because it can mess with the scenario a little bit, but if you go into Root Editor and this happens, it should make the green disappear. It's not actually an issue with the route usually, it's more a case of the um, game for some reasons, not some routes doesn't lo load the tunnel hole decal and you end up with a green hill poking through. I know I had that issue on the word folly. So this is coming down towards Inverkeithing now. There's a classic photographic spot I love here, which I photographed um, Union of South Africa coming across. But it's triggered me almost as much as the Bournemouth signal box triggered me last year, to be honest. And that is that they've used a Kuju concrete bridge, when in real life this is a, it's a red girder bridge, the same as the fourth bridge, in terms of the decking. But... It's been nerfed by this concrete mess, which is a shame. And it genuinely is a shame, because I think bridges and stuff particularly, especially ones that are a bit different, are the ones where you should be really making sure they're custom. Nice to see the Rosyth, uh, Rosyth Docks branch, I think it is, that's in. Where's it go? It, can't, it goes somewhere under here, but I don't know, I shall know. Oh, there it is. Sort of ends somewhere here. But it's good to have that bit in. And that joins up with us at Inverkeithing. And we're just approaching Inverkeithing now. Got another 18 miles to Glen Rose yet, so we've got quite a long way to go. Sorry if I'm murdering the pronunciations of these as well. To be honest, I still don't think I've seen much super elevation. Not going to see any on this curve, I don't think, because there's point work and stuff around here. And this is in the Keefing station then. You do get a lot of custom stations with this view, that is one good thing. You know, for a DTG view as well, being it's reasonably long, long in length as well. I've just like, overshot the stops and everything again. The actual um, amount of custom stations is really good. 
I'm not sure why that's on, but that's quite a cool signal. Again, a decent model. See, that's 3D there. The one that before wasn't. These things happen. Oh, I like the window textures. I like that. That's really good. Yeah, I really do actually like that. The parts are not mega light. Nice wall coming in as well. In the key thing. In Bukitan. In Bu. Ah, oh, forget it. I think I said it right, maybe. Ish. Meanwhile, Max forgot to release the brakes. We'll just say that this video definitely isn't um, showing you how to drive the traction very well. I like all these little tab pads they've been put in. And that station building's really nice as well. The architecture isn't in real life, I mean, but the, the model is good. That texture tiles of it, you can sort of see it repeating every few blocks, but it's not majorly bad by any means. Just speeding again. By this point, I think as a driver, I'd have probably been sacked about six times. So, the junction we've just passed there is the triangular junction at Inverkeithing. If you turn left there, you go around the other side of the five circle. And we're now on the five circle heading on the Dundee line eastwards. Or north eastwards. And the next stop is Dalgetty Bay. I do like the uh, colour of a lot of the new trees and stuff that DTG are doing. They look really good. We've still got wooden track around everywhere. And we're also still seeing, even at the grand old age of 13, Mr. Kuju Fence. We've even stopped using that pretty much at JT now, and that's it's in heavy use on this route, which is, I find incredible, but, especially when, again, they've got better stuff in the library, but, if they want to use it, then obviously it's up to them. Mega, mega short stopping everything here. Absolute, absolute nightmare. Sixty eight is definitely a chance to drive when you've not driven it for ages anyway. I haven't driven it since the video I actually did of it, which was last year. When it first came out, I haven't actually driven it. I don't think I've driven it since then at all. Again it's a decent station asset. This is Dalgetty Bay. I assume I assume in real life there's an automatic door on that place otherwise it's a bit hard to get in. It's a nice asset again, especially the bridge and everything. And the uh, approach to it. Yeah, it's, it's good. I'm going to see if I can see any uh, super elevation here. Hmm. 
I mean, certainly on this curve, there's no super elevation. And we're still on wooden track for who knows what reason. And it's a massive shame that, that little things like that hold it back because you look at the actual route. I mean, stuff like um, cable troughing and stuff, which does add up to the route at the end of the day, but isn't essential. I have some of those little things, it's actually looking pretty decent. But I haven't seen super elevation at all yet, I don't think, which is worrying. This curve should have some more sure of. No. Shame. How oh, we're looking from passenger view. I do like the, the colours and everything of the trees. I'm not so sure about, like I said, the sticky ones that are really sort of spindly, but for the most part, I like them. Again, there's like Kuju houses that we just passed there. Some of them aren't too bad, but it's like, why, why keep using them? When there is better stuff in their own library. Bit inconsistent. The next stop for us then is Abadawa, which is in about a mile. I love this sort of view we're going along now with the uh, the valley setting and everything. Overall, it was running relatively smoothly. I'm getting a little bit of stuff here and there, but I've not had anything major. Let's get some brakes in. I like that bridge. Again, no super elevation on this curve though. And I've got to believe there should be some. But maybe I'm completely wrong, maybe the whole route doesn't have any, but I would I would be extremely surprised if a station or you know curves on the main line like this don't have super elevation on them. Can we actually do a decent stop for the first time on the journey? Although I've come down the platform at walking pace and now I've just overshot it again, so... I think this is one of my worst driving performances of all time. I was talking to Tom before I did the video though, so maybe... You know, it's sort of the, the inspiration, something's rubbed off on me. Oh, that's nice. Quite cool. The old signal box on the station. A lot of the textures are pretty low res photo textures, I guess. And then there's some that are really nice as well. Although. Ah! Why are we half 3D and then not even lined up? Come on. Well, I, I do like that. I really like that. That is the best bridge I've seen on the route so far, I think. Very nice. Ooh, nice exterior as well. Oba de ba oh Abadawa. Oba Dubai Oba de Bear. Nah. I don't think I, I don't think I nailed that one somehow. Another thing that triggers me on roots as well is the uh, constant use of the same Kuju church. I did notice when I was flying across the route, I think the same Kuju church is actually getting used even more than I use it on JT routes. And I use it a lot on JT routes, you know, a hell of a lot. Um, but I'm seeing it even more on here, and we all know for a fact that DTG have got some churches in the library. And that's not actually the 
by any means the worst example of it. There's some further on which I'll find near Kakodi. If I'm if I'm saying Kakodi wrong, by the way, please tell me in the comments. But I'm sure there's some around there. There's like four or five in one view almost. I love the bushes on the right. I love them. They're really nice. Next stop for us then in two and a half miles is Burnt Island. Really excited to see that from the cab. I've flown over there. It was quite nice. Quite a good route for the gradients and changes in speed limits is this one in real life. And in Tim, obviously. Went down a 1 in 100 now, so obviously going the other direction that would be a, a good challenging climb. And the limits are changing all the time. We've gone 50, 65, 75, 40 again in a mile. But again, no super elevation. I mean, you kind of expect that from the people who make the game to use your own features. 90% of routes these days will use super elevation. Most freeway routes, vastly most freeway routes, use super elevation. And it doesn't necessarily need to feature everywhere, but so long as it's on a lot of the route, and especially ones like this where it's so sharp, I can't imagine there'd be a 75 limit on these curves without super elevation. When we get along this next section, I'll go through uh, a few bits in the manual, just what stock you get included and, and stuff like that. Quite a lot of tiles still loaded in here. Uh, Burnt Island is quite a big place, so that will be why that is. FPS wise, I'm at 40 odd, so it's not bad. I am on a decent rig, so obviously, people with a lesser PC might not be, but uh, for me, it's okay. And I've got Streamlabs running as well, which does eat quite a lot of resources. I'm liking that view there, coming over the uh, over the harbour and everything. And the detail on the right. It's good. It just look nice, but I'm not sure if they look a little bit bright, especially on the non, on the shadow side. I don't know if they've been baked or not. I'm never good at spotting baked assets. It's something that I admit I'm not very good at. More crap sopping. See, I have to believe there will be super elevation somewhere on this curve, but anyway. I do like the view here. I feel like that dockyard has been far better detailed than this, which is just nothing on it. Don't know whether that's realistic or not. No idea if that's realistic or not, to be honest. Station asset, as usual, is uh, decent enough by the looks of it. Looks alright when I was passing through. Oh. I would say there must be a massive gap there because if you look, the actual bar shoulder is like not even up to the platform. And on here, the bar shoulder is right next to the edge, so. And we've already got a big gap. So that gap must be huge. That's like a metre wide. Jesus Christ. Barring that, it's not too bad. Bit of terrain bleed here and there, but 
Um, overall, pretty decent. Interesting build. Now it's sort of like in the built in the box almost. Oh, we're going backwards. Yeah, that's that's that gap's huge, absolutely massive. And if the one on that side's even bigger, what what the gap here on this side then? Oh, one on. Anti-Eileen. Oh, a sheet of issue. We're going right along the beach side here. I so, admit, I'm not a fan of the wholly unpainted, completely bare mountainside. And the Kuju Church sort of dominating the view here. An iconic location, two of them. See, that's what's upsetting me a bit, is like, there's two of the same church in one shot there. And especially this one that's right in the middle of a an area where you're going to take a lot of screenshots. Admittedly that thing is easy to miss out, that sort of thing, because when you're making the route and doing your list of assets that you need and stuff like that, stuff that's a little bit set back from the track can be a, um, something that you miss easily. up and down this section because it sort of follows the shoreline and the gradients on the, uh, the shoreline. I know there's a, there's a bit of a slower section down here where it's 30 mile an hour. I think it's here where there's a classic location. Yeah, it's here. I know that's one of the most photographed locations on this route. I recognise it from the photos, which is good. I like the look of this cutting with all the trees and various trees sort of scattered about. So this is Kinghorn Station that we're coming into. I really don't know why I'm struggling with these stops so much. Uh, I don't think I've managed one. Sorry for the silence there, I had to nip away from the computer whilst we were stood there. See again, I'm, I'm getting... 
It's not like I'm some sort of like obsessed about like churches and stuff, but do we really need the same one twice again in the same view? It's just happening a lot. So this is Kinghorn Station. Or Kian Grohl, I think it is. Not quite sure what that texture's doing. I like the uh, platform frontage though. That's nice. Doesn't repeat too much or anything like that. Overall, it's a decent station again. It's uh, not too bad. Not sure what's going on with that fence though, to be honest. It's all got a weird thing on it, like it's been either photo texture or something. I don't know what's going on with that. And that bit's floating. But overall, it's uh, pretty decent. So in terms of the uh, pack, what you get in it, you get this classic steel locomotive, which we're in at the moment. You get a rake of Mark II coaches, which I've replaced with the AP ones, but you get a rake of Mark IIs with the EVU. You also get a rake of Mark I coaches and steam locomotive A4 number 6009, Union South Africa. You get a class 158 in Scott Rail over, you get a 170 in Scott Rail over as well. So, if you haven't got any of that stock, obviously you're getting a decent amount thrown in there with the view. Which is, uh, it's really good. And that's the advantage of the ETUG stuff. Is that they can afford or are able to put in stock with their routes. Uh, the business plan allows that, obviously. Nice to see the viaduct's got the fencing on it and stuff like that. That's quite cool as well, sort of coming across the village green. But, although... No, wait. Is this... This is the spot I was triggered by earlier. Yeah, I got triggered by this earlier. I was flying around, I was like, I want to see... I didn't, I didn't come out like, I want to see the race for Elvis football ground, but... I did notice that the Vafer Rovers football stadium is missing. Which, you know, when you look at it, releasing a route without a landmark like that, because I know when you're coming into Kakordi on the train, or you're coming out of Kakordi, you sort of pass the stadium, or I always pass the stadium as a football fan, and I think, oh, that's where Vafer Rovers play. You can sort of, oh, that's that, or, that, or even the normal commuters, like, oh, that's that place I'm passing on the train there. So to not have anything there is a bit of a shame. Don't know why you'd release a route without that major landmarking, but I have. Probably haven't nerfed the game by doing that when it's the route editor. And this was where I also got triggered by the amount of the same church in one view. This is with the place where it triggered me. So you got like one there, two, three, four and five in view at once of the same church and two right to four right there in the same view at once from the cab even I mean even if you're not making a specifically custom one when you've got so many of them surely you have to at least consider making a separate one or another generic one just so that you can alternate them a little bit it doesn't even have to be massively high detailed. I mean, the Kuji one isn't hugely detailed. It's 
And I guess that's the other thing with it, that asset is so old now. There's no glass in that station roof, I don't think. I swear there was no glass in that one. Well, this is Kakodi anyway. I hope I'm finished seeing that right. I wonder what the Gaelic for Kakaldi is. Is it Gaelic language? The Scottish? Word on the signs? Oh. Not a fan of that texture. Let's have a fly around, because this is one of the more bigger stations, one of the more major stations. I'm not sure why the tech like the glass is only one sided. And especially considering that it's on the it's invisible on the side it should be visible more from. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit strange. The asset itself, it looks, you know, it's well made in terms of the actual construction of it. Looks decent. Got the lifts and stuff in, in this end. Uh, and I guess this is the main building over here. It's nice that they've put that little bit of 3D in there, not just 2D'd it. Could have done if they wanted to. There's a little tiny gap in it there, but you can be forgiven for that. It's not, not really easy to notice. You certainly won't notice that from the cab. Some of the texturing's alright, but it's not amazing. And like that, I'm not I'm not really sure what's going on there to be honest. Anyway. That's the 158 that comes with the route. Quite like the light clusters on that. Although I admit I'm not an really expert on 158s by any means. Care, care cladding, is that? I'm going to async the game again, speed the game up. A bit of a long stop. I mean, that looks fine, like we're looking at it there. So we've got five miles now to our last stop at Glen Roves. been nice to have some bushes on that embankment on the right there, it's completely bare. Well, it seems to be completely bare anyway. Can't see anything on it, it's a shame. But the one on the left, if you notice, looks much better because they have put the weeds and stuff on it. Too far from Thornton Junction now, which is where we turn left towards Glen Roves and where the five circle itself goes back um, westwards towards Dunfermline, and eventually all the way back down to Inverkeithing. In Speeding, by this point, it's not surprising. Again, lack of super elevation. I would have thought this curve would have had it on. And uh, I haven't. I've driven, what, 20 odd miles? 20, if not more than that, nearly 30 miles. Can't say as I've seen any super elevation yet. It's a real, it's a real weird one because you've got like some nice detail there on the right with the gardens and stuff. And we're still passing the Kuju Church every two minutes two in view even now, one on the right there and then one just over those trees. It's 
it's one of those assets where you, I personally, I don't mind seeing it like every, even if I'm seeing it every five to ten miles once, it's not an issue. But when I'm seeing it over and over and over again, it's not brilliant. Especially when you consider the age of it as well. It's not like we've not had any time to mass up a few churches. I admit I've got no idea what actual churches are there in real life. But I wouldn't be surprised if there were some different types and stuff. Like in the detail on the left. And yes, look, they've used the 3D cars, not the 2D ones. Oh, that's cool. They've actually bothered to stack them all on top of each other in the scrapyard. That's really good. That is some serious attention to detail. Great stuff. I love stuff like that. And that's sort of been the, that sums this route up really is that it's great attention to detail in some places. If not on most of the route, it's good attention to detail. It's just a lack of consistency and a few basic errors. And basic emissions like why have we got wooden track and kuju stuff still appearing. It's a, a bit of a strange one. Because it sort of holds the route back a bit. I've asked myself the question as to whether I've enjoyed this journey on here. I think it's a uh, yes or certainly as my first time driving it, but not sure if it's something I'll come back to very often. And we're going massively speeding here. Shocking driving. I know Tom's going to be live streaming this route probably around the same time as this video goes live. And I hope he's done a better job of driving it than I have. So we're going around the curve. That was the Dundee line that we've just left there. This is a triangular junction that we're now going around. Whilst I put power on instead of taking it off. To clarify, I haven't been drinking. I'm driving like I have. We're doing 161 downhill. Yeah, this isn't being bad. Hasn't been bad, but there's missed opportunities and inconsistencies, is the sort of headline I'd give it. Good could have been better. And I don't know what the rest of the route's like, I mean that's the really nice side that I've been on. I know Tom will probably be looking at the other side from here. We've been on the really interesting section back there. Or the most scenic section, I should say. I'm somehow six minutes early. I guess that's working off the uh, real timings. As booked, I've managed to fail the stop in terms of uh, stopping on point. So before the scenario ends, I'll pause it. I really like that bridge, but at the same time I don't because the textures are pretty low-res, but I really like the actual model. I'm not sure why we've done a wall there, and we've done it floating anyway, so... But we've not done one on this side. So that's a little bit of a downer. Don't know what the model's like, I haven't looked at it. This is one of the ones I haven't looked at at all. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's a pretty basic station in real life. It's Glen Ross with Fontaine, Glen Ross with Fontaine, or Glen Rathis with Fontaine. Oh, that's French now. It's Gaelic. Um, it's alright. It's decent enough. I mean, it's just a pretty basic station, as I said. In terms of the route itself, it's a really tough one for me. I've, I've enjoyed 
it I wouldn't say it was amazing. I'm I'm triggered by quite a few things if you if you've watched the video you'll know. Particularly the lack of super elevation and the wooden track. That the wooden track particularly is a big one. Um, there's a bit of an inconsistency in quality of some of the stations and stuff, but none of them are necessarily bad. There's just a bit of an inconsistency with them. I mean, right there as well with some of the random bits, like people can just apparently hear. You can just walk off down the track. I doubt that's the case in real life. So it's inconsistencies like that that I feel just hold it back a bit. 25 quid if you don't own any of the stock, then that's a good deal because you're getting a decent length route. I haven't actually counted the mileage up, but I would suspect it's over 50 miles. Roughly a 50 miles, something like that. And if you've not got the stock, you're obviously getting the A4, the Mark 1, the Mark 2, the 68, the 158, and the 170. So that's obviously a decent lot of stock if you're paying 25 quid for all that, including the route. If you don't own the route, 25 quid. If you don't own the stock, if you already own the stock, sorry, and you don't own the route, you want to get the route, you already own the stock. 25 quid, I would say if it's something that interests you, as in the area, the Five Circle, Edinburgh then I would say it's probably worth it. I would say if it's just something you're looking to do differently, maybe not wait for a sale. I'd certainly say if it goes to a decent price in a sale, it's worth it. Um, definitely not up there with my top DTG routes. I would I would say that for certain. There's too many uh, inaccuracies, not inaccuracies, but inconsistencies and little errors that, you know, made into one, make a bit of a bigger error. But in total, it's all right. I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10 at best. But um, yeah, it's okay. Nothing amazing. You see, look, there's an inconsistency right there. Look at the left hand sign. Then look at the right hand sign. And come on, how does that get through testing? Stuff like text that's a bit blurry and stuff like that, you sort of say, yeah, that's fine, but. Perfect sign. Bad sign. And I suppose you've got to make these mistakes to learn from them. I mean, I made mistakes with Leamington and I left a bloody sign through a post and tangled backwards inside out, up somebody's backside and all sorts. So, I mean, you've got to make these mistakes sometimes to learn from and hopefully this, this sort of thing gets learnt from. But, yeah, I'd say 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks as always for watching. Please do like, comment, any additions you want to add to it. Yeah, interested to hear other people's thoughts as well. Uh, appreciate you watching as always. You know, like, comment, subscribe. As always, thanks very much for that. In terms of Tom, he's live streaming usually. He's on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash TV underscore Tom uh, underscore TrainSimTV. Tom, I've, I found I'm, that talking absolute garbage today, even more than usual. Um, he's usually live half seven or eight o'clock Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, you can catch up there for some good banter usually and watch Tom's driving which sometimes is even worse than mine although probably not today because mine was so bad it was embarrassing but anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video thanks as always for watching see you later guys goodbye